All right, so new movements, right? We're really inventive here. We try to come up with new stuff all the time. There was a bandit full clean and jerk with three white lights in the end, that's for sure. Now it is weekend, guys. It is Saturday, April 11. It's time for another episode of our homework workouts. Let's get started. It is time to get started on our warm up today. We have three movements. The thing you're going to need for today's session, like I showed you in the introduction, is going to be that elastic band because we're going to do snatches, clean and jerks, all the good stuff. Now, for the warm up, the first thing that we will do is some easy split squats without any object. Maybe something soft to place underneath your old man knees. So, let's have a look at Kenan and William demoing the split squats. So, you're going to have a very long stance. And once you're standing, I will tell you this. Make the stance longer, even when you're at home, you do that. Front foot is gonna be the foot that we anchor properly, back foot is gonna be on the toes, and then we're going to simply sit down with the hips straight and go back up, boom. Sit down with the hips straight, go back up. That front foot should be big toe, little toe, heel all on the floor, the back knee gently touching the floor. It's either gonna be right underneath the hip in the bottom or still slightly behind the hip, all right? Eventually, we'll do reps on both sides, but for now, I think we, will, we are good. Now, what Kenneth is going to show you is what to do when you're injured, in a sense that that bending of the knee feels very iffy. In that case, instead of doing six and six of the split squat, you do six reps of a one-legged loop bridge where you drive to the heel and you squeeze your butt as hard as you can, where you try to keep your lifted leg in line with the other leg. Perfectly executed. Glute bridges. All right, solid. Now, our second movement here for today is gonna to be the banded bend over row. So you're gonna grab your elastic band and we're gonna have two options here. You're gonna have William grab the band and stand fully on it, so on two sides, and Kenneth and just want to make it slightly easier and they're both gonna start off on their rows here. So your upper body is as parallel to the floor as you possibly can. You're gonna pull your elbows back and up to get a good action in the lat muscles. Chest stays up nice and high, very solid execution of the band over row. The more tension you have on the band, the harder it's gonna be. Remember, it is just a warm up, so you just wanna get warmed up, no more than that. Now let's go to our third movement here, which is the band pull apart. You get some action on the rear delts. So you're gonna have your arms be right out of you in front, long arms, you grab either one side of the band or two, and you're going to literally pull the band apart. Like I said before, this is my favorite name for a movement because you just say exactly what you have to do. You pull the band apart. So let's pull it apart until you hit your chest and keep your arms in line. So wrist, elbow, and shoulder all stay in the same line. You squeeze your shoulders backwards and you try to keep them low while you're doing this. This is a very good burner. And even a set of 24 should be done unbroken with tension on the band throughout the entire movement. Can you get a bit higher, Kenneth, for me? A bit higher, yeah, you go, buddy, that is nice. Okay, so we've just showed you the movements. Hopefully you already practiced the movement a bit while we were explaining everything. Now it is time to get into some action. So I need you guys to get off the couch and join us for this warm up where we start off with six split squats aside. Then we move on to 12 repetitions of the bend over row with the band and then 24 band pull apart for a total of three rounds where we do one round with you guys together. We're going to start in three, two, one, and go. So we're going to anchor that front foot properly. If you feel like you're losing balance in the split squats, I always want you to take time to change your positions until you feel better. You want to feel like you have a strong base, hip width stance, very long stance, front foot anchored, back foot on the toe, your hips go straight down and straight up until six repetitions are completed. You don't want to just bump into the floor, you want to kiss the floor with the knee. Think it. After six and six, you grab your band and go stand on it because it's only 12 reps. You want to make it challenging, but not so challenging that the form's going to suffer, right? Good. You're going to just make the rows. You want to make sure that your elbow is the primal mover here. Not that you can move the joint. The muscles do that though, but you guys know what I mean here. It's not about how high the band goes. It is about how high can you pull that elbow back and up to get the lats to work properly. Here. They need to fire. That is good. Keep the elbows close to the body throughout all 12 reps. And upon completion, you stand up with the band. You place it out right in front with the height of the shoulder. You start pulling that thing apart. And I want you guys to remain tension on the band, even when the hands come together. So there's always band tension here. And then you just go for all 24 repetitions. When you're at home and you cannot 
keep up with the pace or you're running ahead, I want you to either slow down or just stick to the tempo you're doing because there's no reason to move very fast over the course of this warm up. So we're still in our first round. I need you guys to finish this round on your own speed, then do two more. So continue and press pause. Our second portion of today's workout is I think the longest mobility part we've had yet in our homework workouts, but I think you guys will love this one. Just zone out, make sure you have something soft to be on, and let's get some proper work done here for the hips, okay? We're gonna have two stretches, and instead of showing you the stretches first, I need you to now get off the couch on the floor. I'll be the timer for you guys, and make sure you have your own one ready to continue after we've done one round with you, and set it at 12 intervals of 45 seconds of work and 20 seconds of transition time so we call that rest in the tabata timer on smart one okay i'm gonna have kenan and william with me as well i'm gonna talk you all into the stretch and then i'm gonna set the timers i'm gonna get my timer ready it is guys so we're gonna start off on a pigeon stretch here i want you to place one foot in front cross the lag get your knee and ankle on the floor. Now William is sitting a bit more upright here and Kenneth is gonna be more lean forward. As long as the hips are squared, I'm fine with both. We're gonna actually start in three, two, one. And we're going to hold this stretch for 45 seconds. Now there's lots of things you can do here. You can go back and forth dynamically, but I would love to see a passive stretch here. So just hang into this position and challenge yourself. Now important things to aim for is the back knee needs to be as far away from the hip as possible while remaining squared hips. And squared hips means they're in line with the shoulder and they don't tilt to the side. The front leg can be positioned different ways. You can have your foot come out further to the front, which makes it a bit tougher, but it might also hurt your knee if you have old man knees. So in that case, you pull it in just a tiny bit more. We're aiming to feel a stretch there with the glute, maybe the lower back, maybe the groin area as well. And we have 20 seconds, guys, to switch. Let's switch to the other leg, William, again. 20 seconds to switch to the other leg. I'll count you guys down so you know when to start. We've got 10 more seconds. And in five, four, three, two, one, and let's start again. So William is still upright, Kenneth is still in that relaxed position. They're both slightly different, they're both very good. And now for the remainder of this 45 second time frame, you can listen to the flute. Thirty seconds. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. 3, 2, 1, and 20 seconds to switch. Our next stretch will be starting in a big lunge. So you guys can start, so people at home can see it already. And when we're in a big lunge, we want our knee to not pass the ankle. So get it and make sure your front foot's a bit further. And then you're gonna have the same elbow going down next to the foot on the floor. Three, two, one. Here we go. So we're looking for that groin stretch, right? Now, ideally, we end up in a position over the course of, let's say weeks, where we can have our elbow to be resting on the floor. And this is a very good stretch for the groin area. If you have your back knee behind the hip, you're also stretching the hip flexor of the back leg, which makes it a kind of like a combination stretch. We're now right at the halfway point of this first interval. They're still doing good here. You can slowly lean into the stretch even more once you're doing it. We've done tons of variations of the groin with twisting and all kinds of stuff. But for today, we chose to go for this static one because we do lots of time in the stretches. You got five more seconds before you have 20 seconds to switch. And switch. 20 seconds, slowly get into it. If you guys here do it already, the people at home can see how they should set this up properly. First get your lunge ready, then sit upright, and then slowly drive that elbow towards the floor. And time is gonna start in three, two, one, and go. Perfect. And this is where we insert the flute again. Or we listen to this. Okay. Oh, 
Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, so you guys at home, this is a long mobility session. I need you to stay focused and relaxed in the position. This was one round we did all together. I need you to do two more of these rounds. So continue and press pause. All right, so it is time to have a look at our workout today, which is a 15 minute MRAP of three movements. We're going to take you through all the movements. What I'd like you to do is try to do the movements while we're demoing so you get a good feeling for them before we all do them in the workout, okay? So let's have a look at the first movement, which is a classic backstab lunge. I'm gonna have William and Kevin both start on this backstab lunge here. You reach back with a lag, you gently touch the floor, and you wanna make sure that the front foot is really anchored in the floor properly. Now in the warm up, we did split squats, which was for a reason. It was to prep for specifically this movement. Now you don't want the back knee to just into the floor. No, you want it to gently kiss the floor. And you wanna stay as upright as possible while you're doing the back step lunges. And let's rest for a second. And let's have a look at Kenneth, who's going to show you what should I do at the point where my knees hurt because I have an injury there. Now you're gonna lay on the floor like we did in the warm up. You're gonna have one leg up. Then you're going to do 10 repetitions on one leg of the glute bridge. And upon completion of 10, now let's assume this was 10 reps, he's going to switch legs and work the other leg. Here we go. So we're still focusing in this injury scaling option of getting as much lower body work in as possible with the glutes and hamstring being the driving factor of the movement. And in the backstab lunge, it is exactly that, but we just add the quads in there. Now, let's have a look at our second movement, which is a flutter kick in a hollow body. Now, first thing I need you to do is you go into a hollow body, but your arms can be over your upper body. You don't have to keep them back. And now from there, legs are gonna be extended. You're going to just flutter the kicks. But I do like to see extended legs there. Very nice. Lower back's pressed into the floor. Boom, a little bit more shoulder blades off. Very solid. And every leg you move is a rep. So it's one, two, three, four. Very quickly. Let's rest for a second, guys. Let's have a look at Kenneth here. Now, the first thing I just thought of, which you can do with scaling, is when you're in that position, the same position we just had, is you can get some knee bending in. And instead of getting your entire leg to flutter, you flutter more with the lower portion of the leg which sounds more like flutter actually. And also you can always position the hands underneath your butt, which makes it a bit easier to stabilize yourself in that hollow position. You're not only fighting with the core. Now these are good options to scale the flutter kick, which is supposed to be a nice and taxing movement on the abs. Now, our third movement in this workout is gonna have the band in there. So let's grab your bands. Get on your couch now, please. Grab your bands. And you're gonna stand on the right leg on the band, and you're gonna have your right hand on the band. You're gonna pull it around so the band is slightly behind. Your elbow is gonna be right next to your shoulder. You're going to press up, and you're gonna bring it back down. You're gonna press up. And while you guys are continuing to press, I want you to think this. In the bottom, your thumb is approximately around your shoulder height there. And in the end position, your arm is fully extended, but the shoulder is still low. You wanna aim for extending the elbow and not raising up the shoulder with it. Beautiful one-arm presses that we're doing here. Now in the workout, it says 20 slash 20, which means you have to complete all 20 reps on one arm before moving on to the other arm. But we're now going to assume that while William is continuing on the RX variation, that Kenneth says, dude, it is too heavy for me to go through 20 unbroken reps. I don't want him to do 20, 20. I want him to do 40 reps of the regular overhead press with the band. It is a lot lighter than one arm but he then does have to do 40 reps instead of 20 per arm, so 40 in total. Beautiful. Now let's say that Kenneth has a shoulder injury that tells him not to go overhead. In this case, he's going to a bend over roll position, flat back, chest is gonna be nice and up. Now he's gonna hold both arms long and he's gonna do 20 reps, which is one arm of the row. And the other arm is statically holding tension on the band. So even a non-working arm has bad tension, band tension here. 
Upon completion of the 20 with one, he moves on to 20 with the other arm while trying to maintain strong torso position, a tight core, and a good pull from that elbow back and up. I don't want you to put your back against the wall. I want you to start on the workout. So get off the couch. We just showed you the movements. Hopefully you tried out all the movements. We're now gonna pull them into a 15 minute MREP. So you're gonna need your band. You're gonna need your SmartWatt app. I want you to set the timer, the MREP timer at 15 minutes and get as much quality work in as possible. In the end of the session, you're going to log your results in the app so we all stay connected, right? Let's do it. So guys get ready at home. Walk, work with us here. Wait for me to count you down. William and Cannon will do this with you. And we're going to start with 20 backstep lunges in three, two, one, and let's go. So again, the goal is to stay as upright as we possibly can. Gently touch the floor with our back knee and make sure our front foot stays anchored properly. Right? It's very important during these moments. Cannon is uh, saving his knees by having something soft place underneath. If you're at home, you probably have something soft there as well, which you can use to place your knees on, which is nice. The backstep lunge is not really a fast movement. None of these three are. You just want to actually aim for this workout that never ever stop moving, right? If you take breaks, do it quickly in between movements or slow down the pace of the movement. That is the thing we're looking for. Uh, a com fun completion of the 20 alternating backstep lunges. You guys at home, we move into the flutter kicks in hollow. This will only take a couple of seconds. But the fun thing is we're in hollow here, right? Very quick 20 flutter kicks. We get out of there, we tag the abs, we go back to the arm, and we're gonna move on with the shoulder presses with the band here. 20 reps on one arm. Now Kenneth is opting for the skilled option by moving his two arms at the same time. It doesn't mean he has to do 40 reps here. Now, although these flutter kicks only took them like 8 to 90 seconds, they're now going to have to do shoulder presses for probably close to a minute. So yes, the shoulders will burn today, but eventually, because we're doing this for 15 minutes straight, it'll be a long burner anyway. We're only a minute and a half in. So I'm going to think they probably take a little over two minutes around. But let's say, what pace can you keep on this one? We might zoom into six to seven rounds of this. So I am talking about 120 or 140 lunges, the same with the flutter kicks, and that many presses per arm. Ouch, this is going to be a very painful but fun 15 minutes to go through. Now William is on to his second arm, which means we know exactly where he is in the workout. With Kenneth two arms, I have no clue where he is, but it's going to be good, it's going to be good. You guys at home, if you're running behind or you're not this far in the workout yet, that is all good. It's an MREP, you want to move with quality. If you're way ahead of us, maybe you should slow down, focus on quality, and make sure you finish the 15 minutes properly, right? Hi. Now they're almost done with their first round. We are, I'm gonna peek here, we are about two and a half minutes into this one, right? That means we're gonna get in that six to seven minute time, for, uh, six to seven rounds in total. So I need you guys to keep going on this 15 minute M rep to continue and press pause.